So I was cleaning the bore in both my 410 and my 12 gauge today and decided to try and have a close look at their forcing cones and see what kind they have. Because it's gonna be very important whenever we go to load tungsten to know what sort of forcing cones we're deal dealing with. So the more I talk, the dumber I'm gonna sound on this. I don't know much of anything, but I watched a good video by TGS Outdoors called Forcing Cones Explained. And this is him pointing at a picture of some forcing cones in his video. It's the tapered portion between the chamber and the bore. There are also a couple of good articles on guntests.com, one called the long and short of shotgun chambers and the other called lengthening chambers and forcing cones. So I'll put links down below. If none of this is making sense, then those sources might help fill in the gap. So like I mentioned, I had my, I had my guns torn apart today and I, I decided to try to make a cast of the chamber with Cerosafe. Cerosafe is a metal alloy that, that melts really low temperature. It's like 150 to 200 degrees. You can melt it with a hair dryer. So you melt it, pour it in your chamber, wait for it to solidify and then knock it out of there. This is what came out of my 12 gauge. I sacrificed a, a bore mop to plug the bore and I made a few marks because it's hard to see. So this part here is the bore this part between the black marks is the forcing cone, and then over here is the chamber. So your hole would be, yeah, about right there. Now, if we measure the distance between our two marks, it's, it's around a half inch. It's hard, to, it's hard to be exact about where it starts and where it ends, but apparently a half inch forcing cone used to be normal. It's not normal anymore. So this 12 gauge, I got it in probably 1992, 1993, some, somewhere around there. And that seems to be the time when forcing cones started getting longer and longer and longer. If you've bought a gun in the last 10 years, apparently those have at least an inch and a half long forcing cone. I wasn't really expecting this. I, I thought this gun was new enough that it might have a modern chamber. Now the cast for my 410, it didn't work. I, I tried it twice and I couldn't get the Sarasafe piece to come loose and come out of there. So I don't know if there's a burr or it, maybe it's a little rough in there, but I couldn't, couldn't get it to work and it was a mess because whenever you have to melt this crap out of something, it does not want to come out. Like the first 99% of it comes right out, but it's getting all of the, the leftovers in the nook and, nooks and crannies is, is a pain in the butt. So 12 gauge is confirmed to have a half inch and the 410, I'm pretty sure it's even shorter. I tried to get some video looking down in there, but you can definitely tell that it is abrupt. Now, if you're wondering why old barrels were this way, it has to do with old, old ammunition. So here's a paper shell that I uncrimped or unrolled next to a plastic one. There's just a gigantic difference in thickness. So if you imagine that, okay, this right here is, they call them, uh, yeah, they call them nitro cards. So this is meant to go between powder and your shot. Like we're not using any plastic wads at all. So the powder goes straight into the hole. This goes on top of the powder, then maybe a cork wad or a felt wad, then your shot. Let's just go ahead and lay this out. The sizes are not gonna be correct, but whatever. Imagine that's a, a 410 size cork wad. So powder under here, shot in here, it's all crimped together. Apparently when people shot paper holes, they wanted that short, quick transitioning forcing cone so that this sort of stuff wouldn't leak too much gas in that transition period. But when the world switched over to plastic wads, they've got this cup that's much better at obturating and you know sealing the bore, preventing gas from leaking by. Now I, I get the feeling that all of this would be fine if we still shot paper holes and you know the column of shot was coming out of the shell at something pretty close to bore diameter. But with the thin plastic shells, that forcing cone is a much larger obstruction. So now that column of shot with that really nice gas seal, lots of pressure, it's got to squeeze down to make it through that forcing cone. So that's why a modern gun, it takes advantage of this superior gas sealing and it just stretches out that forcing cone to like I said, an inch and a half or even longer. Now this is not a huge deal when we're talking about lead shot, but whenever you go to steel shot or tungsten, okay, here is the, here's the tungsten 410 wad. It's stronger plastic, you know, it's all about protecting the bore from the shot. The shot cannot make contact with the bore. It's gonna cause damage. So extremely hard tungsten trying to squeeze through that short forcing cone 
can apparently cause damage and you know high, higher than expected pressures all of those things so with my 410 i'm not surprised i got this gun in 1984 1985 something like that and it was already well used it's an h r deluxe topper model 198 so i was kind of probing around in there trying to get a feel for where the forcing cone is and i marked it there with the sharpie and if we take this you know three inch shell here that's about where it would line up. So you imagine that crimp unrolling and it would be just about perfect. But that made me think like, okay, so the two and a half inch, here's a two and a half. Let me mark it about where the, yeah, there we go. So if this were a loaded round, that's about where it would be crimped. So you imagine this shell in there, that is a long way to go. That is a lot of room for that shot column to expand and all sorts of nasty stuff to happen. I would think the fact that any of this works kind of blows my mind. So, so what's the answer here? I've, I've got two guns that they're definitely not ideal for moving forward with tungsten. So I think what I'm going to do is find a gunsmith and see if I can get the forcing cones lengthened in both of these. Seems to be pretty common. I assume most gunsmiths are going to be willing to take on that sort of job. I think there's plenty of meat. That's what I was worried about, especially with the H&R. So, so if, it, if it was stretched out to an inch and a half, it would go out to there. So certainly plenty of barrel meat here for the first first inch or so. So I don't know, I think there's enough there. Should be able to safely lengthen that one, I think. And I can't really tell on the Winchester. It's a Winchester Model 1300 is, is the 12 gauge. Can't tell for sure on it, but I bet it'll be just fine. Cause you know, what's the other option? Retire these two guns and buy a new one? Cause here's the thing, you take the, the little 410 single shot, I could buy a direct replacement for it tomorrow for 150 bucks. And it'll come with, uh, you know, choke tubes. This is this is a full choke, a fixed full choke. I could get a replacement that had replaceable tubes. A lot of them these days are specifically set up and tested with tungsten. So it would be super easy. And I don't know, you know, may, maybe I'll get bad news from the gunsmith and maybe that's the way we'll need to go. But I'd rather not. Like this was my first gun. I'm not ready to retire it. And apparently the, you know, the, the pattern improvements can be pretty significant. Just, just normal stuff, you know, normal modern wads. You get better, you get better patterns and you get lower recoil apparently. So I, I like the idea of, you know, updating the gun, modernizing the gun, getting some more years of service out of it. And the same sort of deal with my 12 gauge. I've got more hours in the woods carrying this gun than any other. Like the bluing's all wearing down from wear. It, it's a really, really comfortable gun to carry in the woods. Every turkey I've ever shot has been with this gun. I know exactly how it sits on my knee. The operation is just muscle memory, right? I mean, like it's, it's a good gun. I don't want it wasting away in the safe. So I guess that's what I've got to say. Hopefully this will make sense. If any of you guys have experience with, you know, lengthening forcing cones and stuff like that, I'd love to hear whether you think I'm on the right track. Now, now this is, this is different. There's another, there's a whole other discussion about really, really long forcing cones and overboard barrels and kind of the, the extreme edge of this discussion. And competitors, you know, like to fight back and forth about whether it makes any difference or not. This is not that. So whether a one and a half inch forcing cone or a three inch forcing cone is better, like whatever, I don't care. But I'm pretty sure that an inch and a half would be better than a half inch. That's what we're talking about here, not, not the other thing. Now, apparently you can do this by hand. I, I don't think it would be cost effective for me to buy, you know, two, two reamers and then probably screw it up. So leaving this one to the pros is probably the smart move. All right, that's it for today. This doesn't really stop progress. I wanna move forward with, you know, loading and shooting and stuff, but in the background, I'll be trying to get a gunsmith lined up. I'll probably have to give them both barrels for three months or something. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. All right, see you guys tomorrow.